I renovated my house over four years ago, I turned this room into a third bedroom by adding a closet on either side of the window. And I always thought it would be perfect to have a built-in window seat right here. And there's nothing like having a baby on the way to motivate you to get things done. So my dad's coming over to help make my dream a reality and this is gonna be the baby's new room. To build this window seat, we're going to use a sheet of 3 8 inch plywood, one by sixes, one by fours, and two by twos, a tape measure, a table saw, a miter saw, medium grit sandpaper, wood glue, a trim nail gun, a level, paint and a brush, painter's putty, drawer glides, a drill driver, a drawer knob, a staple gun, foam, and some fabric. Okay, Dad, you know I want to build a window seat right here. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to open on the top. That seems dangerous for a kid. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, that's not safe. So you're thinking drawers, right? Yeah, a drawer would be perfect. Yeah, I would just put one. All right, so let's go ahead and measure how high we're going to make it. Let's start under the windowsill and work our way down. Okay. All right. You're at 25, so go down to 22. Like any retrofit project, no two are the same. So measurements will differ completely depending on your space. For this window seat, we're just going to cover the basics. We can build it very, very minimal and use the walls, yeah. use the floor, mm -hmm. and if you ever want to take it out of here. There'll just be know. a few holes left in the wall. Yeah, because uh, he's going to want a weight bench somewhere. You know, some things like that, little dumbbell rack in here. <laughs> I was thinking maybe if we needed room for a rocking chair, it could go here. Oh, a rocking chair can go anywhere. Okay, well, I got everything out in the shop, so let's go okay. All right. get it cut. Okay, we're starting off by making a few different cuts here using 2x2 two two and 1x4 materials. These pieces will create the frame. These 2x2s two will serve as legs for the frame. And these 1x4 cuts will serve as the braces around the perimeter of the window seat as well as supports under the center of the seat. And we're also ripping and cutting 1x4s to be used around the face of the drawer. And finally, sand and prime any boards that will be visible from within the room. You want to shoot the other corner? Yep. We're installing the braces around the perimeter first. Next, install the legs. These will give the window seat added strength as well as create a frame to attach the seat face to. With the window seat box all set, we begin installing our face frame, which consists of two rails on the top and bottom and two styles on the left and right. Do what we got here. Okay. For additional seat support, we're installing these 1x4s in the center. Okay, the frame is ready. Next up are the seat and the drawer, so we're taking some measurements. Okay, you got plenty of plywood? Oh yeah. We're ripping plywood to size on the table saw for both the seat face and the drawer face. For the drawer frame, we're ripping a 45 degree bevel on one edge of the 1x4 material, which will match the existing closet doors in the baby's room. Just like a picture frame, we're also cutting 45 degree angles on each end of these four boards. Now we're ready to sand our material before piecing it all together. And I think I'm starting to realize just how excited my dad is to have his first grandson. Does he even have a bed? We can make a bed. It's not too late to make a bed. Maybe make a crib. Maybe a fort. Build him. Go ahead, let's go ahead and build him a little this fort. Project first. The fort has to be elevated for deer hunting. No, you're not taking my son deer hunting. Yeah. That sounds like a bad idea. I know you never had any sons. I know. And you need to make up for lost time. It's going to be special. You were enough boy for the Lipford family. Mm -hmm. They had to wait a little while. Sure did, long time. You were a handful. Are we going to take a Sharpie and put uh, a date on it? We could. All fine furniture craftsmen do that. They probably like, do something fancier than a Sharpie. I know, but looks like we're in a big hurry here. Ha ha. I didn't mean it that way. Uh huh. We're spreading wood glue on every joint. This stuff is vital to any furniture project, so I always have plenty of this type on wood glue on hand since it can be used for indoor or outdoor projects. I'm getting excited. I see it coming together. I see the vision at the end. And uh, you open that up, and there's that little boy sleeping. Is this where he's going to sleep? In case you think he's joking, here's an actual photo of me sleeping in my dad's desk at his office 20-something years ago. 
Next, we add the plywood drawer face. My dad and nail guns can be a dangerous combo, though. We may never get finished. That's enough. Stop. One more right here. Stop. Right here in this corner here. You don't need one right there. You're an addict. And now, you ready? You ready for a reveal? I'm ready. Oh, the front's upside down. I think that matters. Now we're ready to build a drawer box. We're just building a simple box, nothing too fancy. So we're using three quarter by three quarter inch material in each corner to nail our plywood to. Again, don't forget your wood glue. All right, you hold it flush and I'll nail it in place. All right, I like it. Okay, the drawer is assembled. We just need a way to open it. So we're going to drill a hole for the drawer knob, but first we need to find the center. Let me show you a quick way to do center. You see, it's approximately 30. Okay, you come here, you put a mark at 15. Boom, mm -hmm. you turn it around like this, and you put a mark at 15. Boom, and then the center's right in the middle of that. Okay, you got almost 12. So you do six right here. Then you do six here. Look, right in the All center right. of those marks so is the drill bit the goes. center. Why did you well, save that? Why didn't you teach me that before, Dad? Well, yeah, there's a lot you gotta learn. Now we're ready to prime the drawer, which is clearly my dad's favorite part. You know I don't really like to paint. But you know, I I'll bought you it. a brand new paintbrush, no. so it would be an enjoyable experience that for you. That is a nice one. Thanks for letting me help you on this. Thanks for helping. Probably should have dry fitted it. Are we sure it's gonna fit in the hole? Ooh. <laughs> Oh yeah, that is a that's a that's a lack of confidence, but a, a worthy uh, concern. One of the best things about working with my dad is getting to hear him retell all of his childhood stories. Kids should be able to walk within six months, which you know are almost always one hundred percent true. I walked when I was six months. Drove my first nail at eight months. <laughs> I already painted that. Why are you painting over it with worse technique? I just like, you, I just like to apply it. You do the... Well, I already applied it, so you don't have to look do it. Look at me going on. Here, why don't you get the screwdriver and take the cabinet knob off? This would be ready. You were acting up just so you would get demoted. <laughs> After the primer dries, don't forget to putty any exposed nail holes. And while the drawer is out, go ahead and add the drawer glides. Okay, Dad, you like the fabric I picked out for our... It almost matches my shirt. What do you think? Yeah, you definitely um, dressed for the theme today. Mm -hmm. So finally, my dad has no choice but to take a back seat, pardon the pun, in this project. I'm going to show him how to create a cushion for our window seat from scratch. We're doubling up on these thinner sheets of foam. This is an affordable way to do it because the thicker your foam, the more expensive it can be. So I'm going to cut it with a bread knife. So this is the plywood that we cut for the top. Okay, I'm, I'm grooving now. I get it. I get it. A serrated bread knife is the tool to use for cutting foam. It slices through it like butter. It's like cutting pound cake. Yeah, it does look like a pound cake. Your mama's pound cake's this tough, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the last time she's made you a cake, and she's never going to ever again. Just don't mention that. So this will be the top and make it all look pretty, but we'll have little chunks of foam underneath. We're stacking this seat like a sandwich, laying the fabric down face first, then the foam, and then the plywood base on top of that. It can't be this easy. Well, we're not done yet. And finally, we wrap the fabric back around on top of the plywood before stapling it in place. So see, you do the first one, and then when you're doing the other side is when you pull it really tight and smush it all together. Okay. All right, no, e easy now, easy. This is cool. While pulling the fabric tight, staple it every couple of inches along the back. When you get to the corners, fold the fabric and don't hesitate to load it with plenty of staples. Once it's secure, cut any excess. And finally, the finishing touches. I like it. Thanks, Dad. All right, my pleasure. Okay, so how could one little baby have so much stuff? Well, because he has a mom, that's how. <laughs> that works pretty well though, doesn't it? I think so, I like it. Pretty cool. All right, well you take him. I'm Reminds not sure, kind of fragile here. Oh. But I have something. 
Uh-oh. <laughs> I have been saving this for a long, long time. Uh-oh. For you, little Gus. Here we go. Oh, you looking? Whoa, what is it? Oh, it's a little tool bag. It's your own tool bag. Whoa. Do you like it? Yeah, I like That's it. And I'm pretty sure Gus likes it too. But I'm not in any rush for him to use it. I've got so many projects to share with you, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next episode.